Welcome to this special bonus session for the Guest Expert Incubator. I am joined by one of my favorite people, Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Hi, Dr. Jolie. Hi, Jessica. It's so nice to see you. I miss you. I feel like we just don't chat as often as we should. (laughs) I know. I know. This is the love that you get at Interview Connections. Seriously. Seriously. (laughs) I'm so excited. So Dr. Jolie, for those of you who don't know her, she is an expert in jealousy. She has a PhD in jealousy. You know what? Can you do your intro? Because I probably butcher it. (laughs) No problem. So I'm a Jungian and archetypal psychologist. I have a PhD in that, which is weird. But my area of expertise is jealousy and non-monogamy. I also study jealousy in monogamous people's lives. Um, And I'm an ASEX certified sex educator and mom of seven, which definitely adds into the whole picture. And I suppose a person who just really likes what you do. So at this point, I'm just also a Jess fan. So like, can I add that to my bio? Is that legit? I will accept that. (laughs) (laughs) So Dr. Jolie, please tell everyone, where were you when you first started working with Interview Connections, attending one of our master classes? Take us back to Dr. Jolie in 2020. Oh, she was so naive. She had no idea, no idea. So yeah, 2020, I I was launching my first book. Um, I'm writing other books now, but I was launching that book, the one that you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna like plant this flag. This is me. And as the date of the launch got closer, I became aware of the fact that, right, you're gonna need to promote the book. Like I knew it, but I didn't know it in my body. And then I knew it and I waited a little too long. So I found myself in a masterclass. I think I found myself in that masterclass in September of 2020. The book was launching in October. So yeah, sure. Brilliant. Call sooner than that. That was dumb. But I, it was great in one respect, which was I did at that point know that I wanted to talk about the book. And now when people want to talk about that book, I'm like, no, I don't want to talk about that anymore. So four years later, totally different world. Back then I thought that it was a, I was going to, change something by talking, but I didn't even know what, honestly, Jess, I think you talked me through what was possible. Cause I didn't really even understand what talking about my work would do. So mostly I was just ju- jumping off a cliff. Yeah. I, I, I remember, I remember that, especially that first year, first year and a half, I would say was so expansive for you. I remember seeing the evolution of your initial topics on your one sheet being very just like relation, kind of like vanilla relationship topics. And so talk about kind of starting there and then the evolution to being like fully out with (laughs) you. (laughs) You know, it's funny because I thought, so I gave a TEDx in December of 2019. And I outed myself on stage as non-monogamous. I was already out in my local community and to everyone in my life, but like, that's a, that's a big stage to stand on me. Like here, I didn't realize that I still had a ton of fear. I was hiding. I was, I was out of integrity with who I really wanted to be in the world. So yeah, fast forward a year to when I sign on and I'm like, Sure, here are my here are my topics that I like to talk about. Even the book that I had written, I aimed at an audience far more vanilla and um not in a pejorative way. Like they would want what the mainstream wants. They would want the story of a happy life with a partner. That's not what I do. That's not what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I I love helping people make really complicated relationships work. So if you want polyamory, awesome, I'm for you. If you want open relationship, non-monogamy, swinging, like that's what I do really well. So, but I needed to talk on podcasts for quite a while to to have that just, it just kept bubbling to the surface. And I'm like, oh, I can't keep ignoring this. This is the thing. This is what I am meant to be talking about publicly. I had been helping people behind the scenes, but it was like I was keeping it secret I don't like letting shame run my life, but clearly shame was running parts of my life. That's, that's so interesting. And it's such a good reminder for everyone watching who, um, I would guess it's a lot of coaches, people that have a business where it's really rooted in your personal experience and, um, just finding that 
resonance with the truth and not trying to be something that you're not because there's maybe subconscious fear and what people are going to think of you and and seeing you get to that point of just full authenticity from who you are you know what you do what you're talking about everything in full alignment talk about the results that then were created in your business once you felt like you had that breakthrough of being in alignment yeah i mean that that breakthrough and it was it was like um chipping away at, with an ice pick it was not like oh i woke up one day and the rainbow came out and there i was arrived it was it was this slow chipping away of all the stuff that i didn't act wasn't authentic and also going and claiming the stuff that is me the the and it's not just about what subject i was talking about also how i was talking about it how I was presenting this idea. Because the other piece of my life that I was hiding was that I'm a depth psychologist. I talk about individuation. I talk about complexes, right? I'm not for everybody. So I was scared. You said, you know, there's this fear of being um, inauthentic, being seen for who you are. Yeah, there was also a terror that I wouldn't have clients, right? Like if I'm not, like if this, if the mainstream wants a really pretty vanilla monogamous life and I don't aim for that, where will my clients come from? And I had heard, I've run businesses my whole life. I had heard the advice, you know, to niche, but it still felt really, really impossible. It just, like I just kept getting stuck. Um, and then I got unstuck, finally chipped through enough of it to like really plant my flag and say, no, no, no this is it. All I do is help people transform from a mono paradigm to a paradigm of multiplicity. That's what I do. And my, I mean, I 2X'd the first year and then I 10X'd from that. And now I'm on the trajectory to double that. So the results have been great. <laughs> That is amazing. And something that we share in the case study we have about you on our website is all of the major media outlets that have approached you for quotes. Can you talk about the connection between focusing and in, like you invest in podcast casting and you get mentioned and quoted and interviewed by some of the most well-known publications in the world? So talk about that. Yeah. You know, I didn't actually understand what would happen. I had been on a couple of podcasts early on before I signed with you. Um, but I didn't know what would happen when my name and my specialty were tied together and then would show up as two Google pages worth of results. Um, I didn't, I couldn't appreciate that because I couldn't actually imagine it. So I, that was where I was in 2020. And then by the time I was really talking about what I cared about, and I was talking about jealousy and I was talking about non-monogamy, I saw the results be things like, yeah, NPR, New York times called me. I got a call from Vogue at looking for quotes about topics that lots of people talk about, but I talk about it from a very specific angle and they could see that angle. They could hear it. They could literally just click a button and be like, oh yeah, she knows what she's talking about. Okay. The verification was pre-done. So yeah, it's been fantastic. And and that's wonderful for the larger picture too, beyond just my business. I mean, my research is better read. My I just published my latest study in January and it's in the journal, a journal called Cogent Mental Health. And it's right now the second most popular article in that journal. Wow. And it's, it's because of all of this interweaving of visibility that I wouldn't have without podcast guesting. That's amazing. And, and how... One, another thing that I love about you is like, you're so consistent. You're such a smart entrepreneur. You have, you're consistently showing up. You're consistently getting visible to new audiences. You have your, you know, conversion events, your saloons. Like there's always an opportunity for people to come in and learn about and hear about what they can do with you. How has, what role has podcast guesting played in your sales and your marketing? It's played a huge role, but we're not leaving that Freudian slip, Jess. We're not doing it. You said <laughs> saloons instead of salons. And this, this, this psychologist is not leaving that. It was so adorable. I can't even. <laughs> uh, no, no. But really, honestly, a saloon would be a great place to talk about non-monogamy. It would be fantastic. I love it. Um, so I'm honestly surprised that I have been on streaming live for about, like five hours between yesterday and today, and I've only messed up like twice. <laughs> yeah, I think that was great. I'm I'm all for it, and I'm for the humor in like 
this is actually a great example of what it is. I think I show up on people's podcasts and I don't, I don't edit myself. <laughs> I don't try, like, I don't try to be somebody else. This, this is a really good example. They make good episodes by yeah. like, by not trying to be perfect, by not trying to be like super polished every second. I love it. I totally love it. Okay. I'm going to be thinking about this. In your saloons. No. <laughs> In my saloons. So, you know, the, the, I, you asked me about how podcast guesting informs all of that. So one of the things it's done is I have refined my message so much by talking at length. It's not the same. If I were just creating short posts constantly, I wouldn't have the same results as I do because I'm showing up and a stranger is asking me questions about a topic for somewhere between 40 and 75 minutes. They're asking me, yeah, sure. The questions that I, you know, there's a few seed questions that I say, hey, ask me about these things. And then it goes wherever their imagination goes. So throughout that, I started to learn what it was a, a cold audience, somebody who doesn't really know my work, isn't working in the same area I am. What do they have as questions? So it became really easy then to pull out, what are they asking me about over and over again? And I created my my events, the the, the salon that I offer about monthly um, at openeasier.com. That grew out of being asked all these questions. And I couldn't have done that. There's like, where was I going to come up with 150 people to ask me questions for an hour? Like that wasn't going to happen any other way. And definitely an ancillary benefit. I never thought about that. I was thinking about the direct, hey, I want to talk to your audience, but talking to them, total game changer. Yes, 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 yes. The host relationship, what the host is asking you, that is everything. There's so much value in that. And I was talking about this in the bonus session with Christina Woods about how oftentimes people think they need to get all their messaging and everything perfect before they get visibility. It is the opposite. You really need to get in conversation in order to gain the clarity because you could figure something out and then go on a podcast and realize it falls flat. (laughs) Totally. I mean, I, I, when I was first going on, I was I actually like was so nervous about being asked questions that I remember sort of pre-gaming my answers and like I would type out answers. I would try them out. I'd try to polish them. I can't even imagine doing that now. Now, because I've spoken not just on these topics, but I've spoken out of out of my authentic answer enough to trust that whatever comes up will come up. And then the trick is how to stop at the right spot. <laughs> Yes. And that is a skill that you get with lots of experience, knowing when to stop your answer so that the host can interject. That's just the art of being interviewed. Yeah, definitely the hardest one thing. I'm, I, I feel like I work on that every single time, even now, I'm like, oh, stop talking and let the mic drop, like let the thing happen. Mm-hmm. But it's also been really good for me to, to get the feedback as I go. I'm, I've gotten feedback that is you know, direct, a host will say like, that's fantastic. I, at this point I get invited back on most shows. Like I have a lot of double appearances um, or triple appearances on shows, but I've also gotten feedback from the booking agents who are listening to me and they're like, Hey, you're talking about this, but did you know, you, you didn't say anything about what happens to your clients from this angle? Like I've gotten some feedback that I would never have expected because they're looking at it for how it will impact my sales, right? Other listeners aren't looking at it for that. So that's been amazing. Yes. And so what Dr. Jolie is talking about is our interview audits. When you work with Interview Connections, we listen to your podcast interviews from that lens of, are you doing everything you can within this interview? Because when you're present in the moment and you're focused on the audience and the host and everything, you're not always thinking, okay, how can I be strategically talking about this? And so we want you to be present. And then we also just want to give you those tips of, hey, you know, if you give like a client example here, that's something Jonathan Porter Wisman talked about in his interviews. Like I'll tell a story about how I helped a client and that way the listeners can see themselves in that in that story. And that's what motivates them to reach out. So we're here to coach you so that you show up and be brilliant and be yourself. And we're also just kind of just like a coach does is just saying, okay, Hey, here's a, here's a new play hashtag sports. Yeah, (laughs) totally. Totally. And I need it. I really need that because my, uh, my personal story is all interwoven into this. Like, and that is often how, so I'm talking on largely relationship oriented shows. So they'll often start off with like, how did you find yourself doing blah, blah, blah. 
So I have to figure out what the angle is then to, yes, share my story because that's what they're asking for and make sure that it doesn't stay locked in my story because I'm not actually the center of this, the ideas. I mean, when I'm talking about jealousy, that is, that is a huge conceptual thing. How do I shift it? And that takes time and like just a lot of interviews that I listen back to and I'm like, oh, I could have done that better. But the the vast number, the quantity of interviews means that it's it's fine. It, it all works out over time. Exactly. Yeah. You do your best and you do better the next time and you do better the next time. And that's why committing to this long term is key. Because if you just do four interviews, those four interviews better be spectacular if that's all you're doing. <laughs> but right. there's a lot less pressure when you commit long term. And one of the last things I want you to talk about here is your call to action, because we love joliequiz.com. Are you still using joliequiz.com or what, where are you sending people? Yeah. So you heard me do one of my other ones earlier, I caught um, that. Yeah. right right in the middle. I was like, Ooh, nice URL. <laughs> right. Yeah. Open easier.com. So I use actually, I have four different ones that I use depending on where I want people to go. And that's because at this point I'm being interviewed on like three different primary topics and they, I, I may want them to enter into my world in different ways. That said, I actually just reworked my funnel too, so that now it'll be easier to go back and allow everyone to come in through a, a general audience um, flow that'll make more sense, even though I'm talking about multiple topics. A quiz is great. One of the reasons I love that joliequiz.com, like I can say it so fast, even if the even if they're not giving me a ton of like, hey, tell everybody where to find you, I can usually drop it in somewhere and just say like, if you're thinking about this, you might want to take the quiz. It's joliequiz.com. It's easy. It's relatively memorable. It's short. I waited way too long to get a short URL. Now I, I am queen of short URLs. I have tons of them. <laughs> um, and it makes it easy because not all podcast hosts ask you at the end. Plenty of them just stop. They just They just end the interview. So if I haven't threaded something in somewhere, I feel like I've left a little opportunity on the table. Yeah, that's so smart. A lot of pos a lot of podcast hosts will give you the opportunity to give a CTA and some won't. Some will yeah. record the outro after the interview. And so I think that's super smart to look for opportunities to plant seeds and mention, mention your podcast, mention your book, mention, you know, you can mention things because also some listeners don't make it to the end. I've got a lot of half played podcast episodes. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. And in my bio, for instance, I, I put that I, you know, I'm also co-host of the playing with fire podcast. It, it's in my bio because I know that they're going to hear it up at the, at the front and that way, if I don't mention it, because it might might never come up, but that's a great way for people to actually start hearing my perspective from an even deeper level. So I love that as another way for people to enter into my world. And I look at a long, I, I have a long nurture cycle for people. So podcast guesting is great for me. I, because I'm expecting people to take somewhere between three and 18 months to come into my world. I'm not expecting them to turn around in a day. That's just not how it works in, in this it, at least the way I'm doing things, because I'm asking people to sign on to work with me for at least a year. It takes some time to warm up to that. So yeah, taking the long, taking the big view for myself makes sense because that's also what I'm asking my clients to do. I am so glad that you said that. There's, there's That's gold right there. Number one, knowing what the typical sales cycle is for your clients are. When people ask me, how fast can I get an ROI? I'm like, well, if somebody hears you today, how likely are, like, how long do you think it's going to take for them to sign up? It's not about, po it's not podcast guesting that's going to determine the sales cycle. It's what is your typical sales cycle? Podcast guesting will certainly help warm people up more effectively than not having any content out there at all. But people do need to warm up to, you know, relationship coaching, intimacy coaching, health coaching. These are services that are working at the core of who people are and what they feel about themselves in their life. It's going to take them a little bit sometimes to. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have a whole CTA just for people who are like, yeah, so I'm in, that sounds really, really fun, but my partner would freak out if I mentioned open relationships. I like, I have a whole CTA just for that because there are plenty of, I've been invited on, honestly, even by hosts who are adversarial. They're not into the kind of relationships that I have. And they, there's a little, a little twist there. It's fine because I've already tailored my CTAs to approach people from all of these different angles. Like, cool. It's okay. Not everybody has to be on board. What conversation are you going to have then? Because I don't think keeping secrets like that from our partners is a really cool move either. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh, Julie, I could talk to you for hours, but we do have to wrap up because I know both of us have a call in a few minutes. I'm so glad that you joined us because this was so valuable. So real quick for everyone who needs to book their call, discounts and bonus gifts expire on Friday. So interviewconnections.com slash call, get your call scheduled. Jolie, where can our listeners and viewers find you? They got to go to joliequiz.com. That's the easiest entry in. Just come on in. You'll take a 10 question quiz. It's based out of my research to find out whether you even are in the realm of non monogamy or even want to be. But if you're not into that, I would still recommend going over to Playing with Fire and checking out my podcast because the relationship information that I talk about there is relevant for everyone in all kinds of relationships, even friendships. I loved your episode about rom. I think it was about romantic friendships. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. I actually sent that to my best friend. And so, yeah, even if you are a, if you're a staunch (laughs) monogamist, all good. It's all good. (laughs) Even if you're a heterosexual monogamous person like me, like you'll still get a lot of value from Jolie's content. She's amazing. Follow her on Instagram. Go check it out. If anything, take her quiz and get into her sales funnel just to experience it. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot that you can learn just by going through people's marketing. Oh, totally. I mean, my email list is banger. Like if you just want a good example, it's, it's awesome. My, like my funnel for that is awesome. So if you're just getting started, just go read it. It's awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jolie. Thank you for everyone watching. Book your call, go connect with Jolie, and we'll see you guys for the next bonus session tomorrow.